Thank you. Thank you, Chet. Thank you very much. It's really great to welcome everybody to the faculty. Certainly, I'm sure I know this program started very early in the morning, uh, bright and early. And, I, you know, I was thinking about what should I say um, to welcome everybody officially? But, you know, I thought, let me start with the seasons, because I think that's also part of our heritage, even though it's part of the natural uh, wonders of the world in many ways. But I think, you know, we've just had the start of spring. Um, and what does spring bring? Wonderful new weather, change. We've experienced a fairly cold winter. But you're in the capital city of the country, Tswane. And what a better way to think about the prospects in the coming months when in October this, this city transforms into purple blossoms. And, you know, we have the beautiful purple haze uh, from a long winter really charting a new trajectory for us in the year. And that's also part of our wonderful heritage. It's, it's important to think about that in the broader context of what you're doing here. As the Dean of the Faculty, it's really my pleasure to welcome everybody to the Faculty. Um, and let me just start out like this by firstly recognizing uh, Mr. Kubono, who just spoken now, uh, CEO of the South African uh, Heritage Resource Agency, if I got that correct. Yes. And to recognize Mr. Kwezi Pumalwana, who I think might be here by now from the National Heritage Council, as well as I, I heard another name being mentioned, Clinton Jackson, um, as well as recognizing, very importantly, the Department of Historical and Heritage Studies at our university, Professor Harris, you as head of department, uh, Mr. Hannes Engelbrecht plays a critical role in that, but also colleagues who are joining us from other academic departments that play a role um, in this program at the university. I've noted Dr. Nlobu is here, and certainly many other colleagues from the department, and certainly students who are also <coughs> present here today. You mentioned something very, very important at the start of your presentation or inputs, and that is the recognition of the connection between the university and these important statutory agencies. Um, they're not just simply statutory agencies, but they play a critical role for us, not just simply in taking forward what we in academia might theorize, we might research, we might write about, and think about in more practical terms, but really going to the heart of the matter in making real change in so far as our heritage is concerned. And what better way to acknowledge that in the context of Heritage Month? Of course, Heritage Day is coming up on the 24th of uh, September. And of course, we all know, put colloquially, uh, what that is often described to be as National Bride Day and all of the other elements. And of course, that, that is an indelible part of our, of our society. But it's not the only thing. you know. In this very signal year in South Africa, a centenary year in so many ways, I'm also reminded as I was thinking about this, uh, my welcome, about the observations that Madiba meant, uh, meant uh, or indicated on heritage. And, and I recall this wonderful statement. He said, our rich and varied cultural heritage has a profound power to help build our nation. Yeah. That's important, but I'm also reminded by another very prominent scholar, a famous writer from the United States, John Steinbeck, who wrote this wonderful book called The Grapes of Wrath and the Great Depression, and he said, how will we know it is us without our past? And so for me, what's very, very critical about this assembly, this coming together of the two agencies, together with the Department of Historical and Heritage Studies at the university, is really what you have also said about the importance of, of continuing a conversation. It's about, I think also rightfully so, raising awareness about the meaning, the importance, and the prospects of heritage. Now, we recognize that we come from a very divided past, and that divisions are still very much rife in our society. We cannot gloss over them. So, a signal question will always be, in thinking academically also about this issue, is what is our heritage? What constitutes our heritage? 
My own view on that is not purely academic. It's to recognize that heritage is a very important concept. I see it also, frankly speaking, as a non-renewable resource. Now, we need to think about that. When we talk about something as a non-renewable resource, it actually means that it has the danger of escaping us, in some ways being minimized, undervalued. And so what it requires of us and the agencies that are statutory in our country is taking stock of why heritage is a non-renewable resource. What values accrue from thinking about heritage? I mean, certainly we can talk about the values that heritage brings around, you know, the connections it establishes, even though we might come from deep divisions. It's also about our values and how we look at that in terms of what we value to be heritage and its important. It's ideas. It's our customs. You know, frankly speaking, heritage is also about our shared histories. So heritage is powerful. It is both tangible. In other words, we can feel it in a concrete way, but it's also intangible. We might not feel it, but we can experience it emotionally, viscerally, in our heads, in our emotions. And I think these are very powerful issues that we should not underestimate or undermine in thinking about this. So the issue of awareness building, raising consciousness, thinking through, and I love your concept about thinking about the economy, the heritage economy, it's absolutely critical. It's not just simply about thinking about the socioeconomic, although we know very importantly that heritage, as I said, is a non-renewable resource. It actually plays a critical role in the formal and informal economy in our country. What difference can academia make by not only training students uh, to be not only practitioners but thinkers, but to be ambassadors of our rich her heritage? And I think this is this is essentially powerful. You know, from an academic point of view, there's much to be said about this. But I think also from a developmental perspective, you know, our national development plan speaks really in, 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 in strong terms about the fact that the creation of a new society in 2030, if we go back, uh, go ahead into the future, is a kind of country that is contingent on the kind of heritage that we want to think about for the future of our country. That's the first thing. Including also, Agenda 2063, looking at our relationship as a country in relation to the continent, because our borders are porous, but we're deeply connected to the countries. And we know the context of the continent has had deep divisions, particularly in terms of thinking about how our continental heritage resources are being treated and indeed protected. We've seen what has happened in Mali with Timbuktu, in terms of the resources and the and the sites there, very, very important. But also more importantly, what I wanted to, 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 to end up with is a few points around this issue. That us coming together with the, with the two organizations today is timely and I think one that we should continue to do so. Um, particularly in terms of the work that you're doing, but I know very well from where I sit the deep relationship that the faculty in particular, the, the Department of Historical and Heritage Studies, has with these entities. And perhaps what might be reassuring, this faculty is launching in 2019 one of the most pioneering degrees ever to be launched on the continent that speaks to the issues of heritage and identity. And our historical and heritage studies department is working very, very closely with other entities within the university, but also at the intersection of art and science. And it's a degree that is focusing on tangible heritage conservation, which I think is going to be powerful 
It's going to be training a new generation of people in a way complementing already the excellent work that is taking place in the broader domain of heritage studies that the history department um, at this university leads together with our colleagues in archaeology, uh, our colleagues in the museums, uh, etc., within the context of the university. So, colleagues, what else can I say except to wish you well and to say that I think, yes, Heritage Month happens once a year, like we have Women's Month and many other months, but I think the real challenge for each one of us is to make heritage an everyday issue because it matters not just simply from a political perspective but also from an intellectual perspective that it is kept on the radar that we do not take our heritage in whatever way we wish to conceptualize it for granted. I think the issue of preservation, conservation, protection, promotion is deeply connected to our identity as who we want to become as South Africans, or if you're not South African in the audience, whatever your identities may be. So from our side of the faculty, I really wish you well for the course of the day and the discussions. I trust that this is an event that does, doesn't simply end here. And I can certainly say it's not just simply public speak. My colleagues know that. And it's, it's a commitment that we, as the leadership of the faculty, will continue to make beyond today's event. And we deeply appreciate the partnership with the, the two organizations. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I wish you a great set of discussions.